Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Better Late Than Never, a series where I play old games that I never got around to playing and talk about what we can learn from them today. Now, last episode, we took a look at Half-Life 2, a game considered an all-time great that's kind of starting to show signs of aging. And that made me kind of curious. Is the same true for other masterpieces from the early 2000s? So in this episode, we're looking at Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, I've always seen Bioware's beloved 2003 RPG on best games of all time lists, including a number 3 slot on IGN's best games of the 2000s list. So can it still hang with the best of them in 2017? Well, as always, it's complicated. Here are my three biggest takeaways from Knights of the Old Republic. Number one, okay, I think I finally get Star Wars fandom now. And, and not that I didn't before, but I've personally just never been a quote-unquote Star Wars guy. I enjoy it, because, I mean, who doesn't, but I never became obsessive over its universe like other people I know. Well, with KOTOR, I think I do get it. The game's story is engrossing because the world feels truly lived in. The high-level conflict, the races, the fleshed-out characters, there's just a wide sense of scale in the game because it feels like things are happening outside of your story. I think in a lot of games, they exist in this kind of weird vacuum where the events on screen are the only things that exist in the game world, period. But Star Wars has decades of history, lore, and fiction behind it, making it a rich gold mine for narrative. I, I mean, even take a look at a game like Battlefront. It's just a PvP shooter, but the larger conflict in the expanded universe makes the battles feel important. As if every match you play is actually part of the Star War. KOTOR is narratively denser than maybe any game I've played, and I really appreciate that the Star Wars universe provides a framework for that to happen. I mean, even tabletop games like X-Wing benefit from that. And, and speaking of which, that's actually another aspect I really admire about this game, which is that... Number two, this actually kind of feels like playing a tabletop RPG. I'm a big Dungeons & Dragons guys, and I love how tabletop games like that work. When we talk about RPGs in gaming, that's not the experience I really think about. Video game RPGs reference that type of game, but ultimately do their own thing. Kotor, on the other hand, has a straight-up D&D feel. The character creation process, for example, is way more in-depth than I'm used to in games. I spent a good 20 minutes at least tweaking my stats and abilities, giving thought to how I wanted my character, uh, who I envisioned as this kind of smart-ass Han Solo type, to be. And that wasn't just in the creation process. Interactions with other characters gave me a chance to develop that in a satisfying way, like getting to tell off a xenophobic street preacher with spunk or shutting down a misogynistic companion earlier on. Within an hour, I had kind of a perfect sense of who I was and how I'd react in situations, whereas in other games I'd just be kind of trying to pick the correct dialogue options. Now, I keep coming back to the word dense to describe this experience because I think there's just a lot of meat to it. But I also think that presents a little bit of a problem, and that leads us to number three. It's important for games to be legible. This whole series, I've been trying to figure out what makes a game hold up, and, and I don't think there's one answer to that. But I've been thinking about the idea of legibility. Games speak their own unique language based on mechanics and UI. I always wonder why the original Super Mario Bros. is still fun to play, but so many 3D games aren't, and I think it might have to do with this idea. You understand that game right away. Move right, jump on enemies, collect coins, etc. It's all pretty clear and easy to sight read. KOTOR, on the other hand, well, not, not so much. A lot of that language is based out of 2003 game design, which 15 years later isn't exactly easy to understand. I mean, sure, we all understand how to play a game like Horizon Zero Dawn today because it exists within a trend of modern open-world games that have this kind of shared language. But imagine playing that game in 15 years if the open-world trend stops. Now, that's kind of a long way of saying that my experience with KOTOR was a mixed bag. I loved the stories and the characters, but I never felt like I could fully grasp its complex mechanics. And that's partially because they were compounded with a load of bugs, leaving me confused as to what was an intended mechanic and what was a bug. Like when I would switch to a party member and they just couldn't move suddenly. Now, I'm not saying that all games should be pick up and play simple. But overall, KOTOR weirdly made me appreciate Half-Life 2 more. Sure, its technical aspects are kind of taking a hit with age, but I always knew where to go, what to do, and how to play. And maybe that's the key to what makes a timeless game. Either way, this series is pressing forward, so what games do you want to see me tackle next? Check out the link in the description for the list, and let me know in the comments. Thanks to Dan for picking this one. May the Force be with you, or may the Force... May the Fourth be... I don't... I don't know.